From Fallout 3 to Fallout 76, we've met some massive powerful enemies that wander the wastelands in each game. So today I'm discussing the toughest and strongest enemies that we've met playing the Fallout games. The Bloatfly is a common nuisance that we've seen since Fallout 3 with more variations of the enemy being introduced in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. But in Fallout New Vegas we can find one more variation of the Bloatfly in the Old World Blues DLC. In the mysterious cave in the Big MT, it's infested with Bloatflies along with a legendary Bloatfly. The legendary Bloatfly is bigger than a normal Bloatfly and much stronger too. In fact, it has twice the health and does twice the damage of a legendary Deathclaw. It shoots a plasma poop at you that deals 300 damage and it flies much higher than a normal Bloatfly, making melee attacks almost impossible. Next we go to Fallout 3 where fighting rad scorpions is my biggest fear at a low level. The albino rad scorpion introduced in the Broken Steel DLC takes the cake for being the toughest of all rad scorpions. The albino variant boasts 1500 HP, a damage of 100 plus 25 poison damage, and they will slowly regenerate their health when exposed to direct sunlight. So stay in the shade and cripple their legs for your best chance of defeating an albino rad scorpion. With the Far Harbor DLC in Fallout 4, fog crawlers were introduced to the wasteland alongside their variations. The enraged fog Crawler is the strongest of all the variations with over 2200 HP, 4000 damage resistance, and possesses complete immunity to radiation and poison. There's a side quest called Shipbreaker where you help a guy hunt down a legendary enraged fog crawler named Shipbreaker. And upon completing the quest, you get a unique harpoon gun named Skipper's Last Stand. These big lobsters are not my favorite to fight. The Super Mutant Behemoths are a staple in the Fallout game when it comes to fighting strong enemies. The ancient Super Mutant Behemoths are the strongest and most powerful of all the variations in the Commonwealth in Fallout 4. Their melee damage is over 200 per swing and the boulder they throw is over 150 damage and they boast around 1900 HP. There are a lot of Super Mutant Behemoths scattered in the Fallout wasteland so stay strapped with a fat man. Longtime Fallout fans know it's never a good idea to play with a Deathclaw, especially when it comes to special Deathclaw variations. The Mythic Deathclaws are the strongest variation of all the Deathclaws in Fallout 4 and sound just as scary as they look. Mythic Deathclaws pack a heavy punch with their heavy melee dealing 350 damage with a regular melee of 175. They have over 1300 HP and they start to appear in the Commonwealth only after level 75. Some consider the Mythic Deathclaw to be the deadliest enemy you face because of the sheer strength and speed of the Deathclaw, so make sure you watch your back once you hit level 75. First introduced in Fallout 4, the Mirelurk Queen is the most powerful of all Mirelurk. The Mirelurk Queen is 13 feet tall, towering over the character and spits acid from an insanely long range. Don't get too close to the queen as the melee damage from a Mirelurk queen is stronger than a super mutant behemoth or a deathclaw. You might get knocked out with that one punch. A special variation called the Nucleurk queen is 500 more HP than a normal queen and can be found outside the Nuka-Cola bottling plant in the Nuka World DLC. Heading to Appalachia where Fallout 76 introduced us to the Wendigo which is a strong enemy in itself but the variations of it are much stronger. The Fallout 76 Wastelanders update added in the Wendigo Colossus is a new enemy to face. A special Wendigo named Earl Williams is a legendary Wendigo Colossus located in the Monaga Mine who boasts about 30,000 HP and a melee damage that will take you out quickly. You'll definitely need some help killing him as Earl has a passive skill to reduce damage by 80% so he'll take quite the beating. You can only fight him in the public event a colossal problem so you'll probably have some help when doing it. Another Fallout 76 enemy that you'll face can only be spawned in by launching a nuke. The launch will activate a public event that most likely everybody in the server will go to to fight the legendary 3 star Scorch Beast Queen. The Scorch Beast Queen is an in-game boss in Fallout 76 who boasts about 30,000 HP and it was kept a secret upon release of the game. I recommend a 50 cal machine gun or a plasma minigun to help take down this legendary enemy the quickest because you have 30 minutes to kill the Scorch Beast Queen and complete the event. Let's go gamers, we beat the Queen! With Fallout 4's Automatron DLC, they introduced new variations of the deadly Assaultron. The Assaultron Gorgon is considered to be the deadliest of all the Assaultron variations. Wielding two shish kebabs and the signature powerful head laser, they're able to pack a punch at close and long range. The weapon of choice I recommend is a fat man. Actually, I recommend a fat man on every single enemy I'm talking about. Actually, I recommend using a fat man on every single enemy ever. The most feared enemy across the Fallout games comes from Fallout New Vegas. Legit Lanius from Caesar's Legion is the strongest enemy you'll have to fight, specifically because his character is 80% faster than the player. He wields the Blade of the East which can quickly dissolve your health bar in seconds. He is the tallest human character in Fallout New Vegas, he can't be disarmed no matter what, and he'll heal himself back to full health once he drops below 40%. Legit Lanius definitely lives up to his rumors of being a powerful military commander of Caesar's Legion. I always thought it was 
funny to fight him with the blade of the west you know because he's got the east blade the west blade east coast west coast kind of thing you, you feel me either way these are the toughest and strongest enemies we've had to face in the fallout games and i hope to see more added to this list upon the release of fallout 5 i'm trying to reach my goal of 1000 subscribers by the end of the year so help me achieve it by subscribing did i leave anybody out make sure to check out my fallout easter egg series and subscribe to stay tuned